Hey everyone, I'm Julian of Julian Creates and welcome back to my sewing room where today we'll be sewing my new latest Nomi pattern, Nomi 2079, as we can see here. Um, this is a double breasted shirt as well as a pair of asymmetrical fly front pants, um, which I'm really excited to make, especially because this is something that you normally do not see in a lot of menswear. Um, the pants really came from after seeing Marcia's pants of Kichi B style, um, where she did the last last season, season before last, where she did the asymmetrical cargos. I loved that detail. Um, and I saw it actually before it even came out in pattern in real life when we met um, for Friendsgiving, what, maybe a year or two ago. So when I saw that, I was like, that I love that idea and wanted to also see it in menswear. And with the top, I was seeing some of these different um, double breasted tops with like um, traditional lapels and stuff like that, that I thought was a really great addition with these pants. And it, depending on the fabric that you choose, you can get so many different vibes and looks with your pattern. We're going to start with view A, which is the top, and I'm going to show you a show you it a little bit different um, than what you see here. Here I used a stretch cotton sateen, so it had a little bit of give um, and a little bit more structure. This time I'm going to use a recycled rayon, so it's going to be a little bit more of a drapier fit. Remember this is oversized, so definitely pay attention to the back of your packet so that you can decide on which size is going to work best for you. We're going to start again with view A, so let's get started. All right, so in order to construct view A of this pattern, there are eight pattern pieces that you're going to need. You will need piece number one, which is our front. You're going to cut two. Piece number two is our back. You're going to cut one on the fold. Piece three is our upper collar. You're going to cut one on the fold plus one of interfacing on the fold. Piece four is our under collar. You're going to cut one on the fold. Piece five are our front facing. You're going to cut two of these as well as two of interfacing. Six is our sleeves. You're going to cut two of these. And as you can already see, I've cut out my fabric, but this is our continuous lap. You're going to cut two of these and these are cut on the bias. So instead of going along the grain of your fabric that way, you'll follow this arrow here to make sure you're following the grain directions needed for your fabric. Finally, you'll need piece eight, which is our cuff. You'll cut two of these as well as two of interfacing. So once you have cut out all your pieces and interface those that need the interfacing, meet me at the machine and we'll get started. All right, to get us started, we're gonna start with reinforcing um, the areas that will be used in the lapels and the collar. Um, on both our front as well as on our facing. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've gone ahead and marked all of my knots, all of my dots. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and go an inch up, inch over, as well as inter uh, reinforce here with some reinforced stitching. I don't need to do it here. So just these two here on our front pieces. And then I'm going to do the same on my interfacing. And don't you love that my pen coordinates with the rest of my fabric? All right, let's go over to the machine and take care of this. So today I am sewing on a Fafa Ambition 620. Let me tell you the story of this machine and why I'm using it today. So I won this machine on shopgoodwill.com a <laughs> few months ago by accident because I was like, hmm. I want to give it a try. Didn't think I would win, made a bid, still won it. But it is perfect because it coordinates with the fabric that I'm using. So we're using this today. Um, I am using a regular needle, regular straight stitch to do this. And we're using a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance unless otherwise marked. So we're going to start 
by reinforcing at the dots. So once I've done the reinforcement stitches on my front pieces as well as my front facing, we are going to start with just the fronts and we are going to connect them to the back piece at the shoulder seams matching our notches. We're going to sew a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, the pattern would have you also go ahead and do the side seams. I like to wait to do the side seams because I like to put in my sleeves flat. So what we're going to focus on is just sewing together our, our fronts and our backs at the shoulder seams for right now. I'm also going to go ahead and use my serger just to finish this top edge. Um, makes it easier for me instead of having to go back and do some finishing later. Once I've done that, we are then going to go and do a stay stitch along this back neckline. So now I went ahead and added my fronts to my back. And then I went ahead and surged it and pressed my same allowances to the back as well as stay stitched um, my neck edge, my back and neck edge. So this is our front and our back, so our body piece without the side seams done. So we're gonna put this to the side and start working on our collar. So we're gonna start with our upper collar piece. What I have gone ahead and done is made sure I marked all of my dots as well as my notches that I can see in the fabric through the interfacing. So what they tell you to do on the pattern is they want you to add some e-stitching or some stitches that you can use for gathering. You're gonna go from this knot near the corner or near the point down to this dot and to your notches on either side. You basically are doing two lines of gathering stitches so that you can use that for easing. Then at the top here, you are going to go ahead and do a line of like stay stitching almost at five eighths of an inch. And once you do that, you are going to cut between these two dots. So the two, the two small dots here, and I made a line here so I can see where I'm supposed to be cutting at. And we are going to fold that edge back at five eighths of an inch and then trim it down to a quarter. So let me go ahead and take care of that and then we'll start putting the collar together. So now that I've gone ahead and did that ease stitching, I've gone ahead and pinned both the under and over collars together, making sure that I match my dots, my dots as well as my notches here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the large dot down and around along this double notch edge, sewing it at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Once we have then done that, we are going to understitch um, the seam allowances to the under collar. So once I got done doing along the notch, the double notched edge to the dots on the sides, I then went and understitched the under collar piece and turned it out. So now that this piece is turned out, we are going to go ahead and baste all the raw edges shut to basically the dot here on either side. And then we'll start working on attaching this to the actual shirt body. So now we're going to start the process of attaching our collar to our shirt. So the way that we do that is we are going to take our collar piece and we're going to put upper collar right side to the body of the shirt. And we are going to match at um, our large dot, our small dot and our notches on either side, on either side of our collar. So if you did your basting using your notches as guides, basically you could use that line of stitching you will know where your your dots match so this dot matches basically right to the edge of our collar going all the way to this side 
where it matches at the junction point when we start to turn. So we're going to just sew here. And on this side, just sew here. So between the dots, reinforcing at either side. Then we'll start to um, worry about the next piece. But just do that part first. All right. So we went ahead and sewed on from our dot to our next dot. And here I felt like I wasn't getting as close as I want to. So I went back in and just did a little bit more. Um, what you can also do is you can go ahead and do like a tailor's tack or a hand stitch to match up your dots at either edge so that you make sure that you are getting exactly where you want to go. And you know, if it's not exactly what you want, there's nothing a little hand stitching can't fix. So once we have done that on both sides, we are now going to go and stitch this down at five eighths of an inch seam allowance in the center. Now you might want to sew it from this edge to make sure that you are keeping all of this facing out the way um, and you're not stitching that down. So I'm probably going to take my pins and replace them to the other side just so I can make sure that everything is going to be right in place. But I can still see where my dots are and we can sew along this edge. Again, at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, before we go to our next step, this is something I like to do when I'm sewing, especially um, something that is precise as some of those corners. I like to just go in, take a little look-see, make sure we on the right track. Now, there are some extra stitches I might have to take, take out, um, but there are some of like the basting stitches and the stuff like that. But you know, we just wanna check to make sure we we all right. Not pressing it or anything yet, we're just checking, all right? So, we can still make sure that this is open. This all looks good. All right, so as you can see here, there are some extra little stitches I'm probably gonna have to take out once we're done. But, we are gonna keep that like this for right now. Now, we're gonna start working on our facing pieces. Now, looking at our facing pieces, we've already gone ahead un and did the reinforcement stitches. I have not clipped into this, but we are going to clip to that line of stitching, not through it. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and finish this raw curved edge. And this is the unnotched edge. What I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and serge this edge and then fold it in and top stitch it down, giving it a nice clean finish on the inside. We're gonna do that to both sides and then we're gonna start working on attaching it to the front. All right, so I went ahead and finished that curved edge. Like I said, I used my serger and did just use a regular four thread and then pressed it right along that stitching line, top stitched it down. And now we're ready to start trying to connect this to the rest of the shirt. And again, we've already went ahead and um, reinforced at our dots and we clipped two, not through um, that dot and that line of stitching. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that our collar is down facing the rest of the shirt. So the collar, you want the collar to be sandwiched in between. And normally what I do is I take, I know that my first dot is here. So I'm, I'm matching that dot, matching that edge. And then looking at this, 
and looking at where that pivot is so that I can then pin this all together. What I also went ahead and did was I went ahead and folded over this uh, little piece at the at the top of it so that it can um, be stitched down and kind of looks finished when I put it towards the shoulder. And we are going to go ahead and make sure that all of my uh, dots and stuff match all the way down. Now here, what they tell you to do between this dot here to this notch, you can put some more gathering stitches. I found that with this fabric, um, similar to how we did with the collar, I did not need them. So I did not put gathering stitches here, but you can put some gathering stitches to make sure that everything aligns, but you wanna make sure that your notches and your dots match. And then you're gonna sew this all together with three eighths, or I'm sorry, with five eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, so I've gone ahead and sewn one of my facing pieces in, making sure that I pivoted at that, that notch. So here was a dot here. And a dot here, this is where the pivot point is. And it sewed all the way towards the shoulder seam. This is where that folded over edge kind of matches up with the shoulder seam and I can tack that down. But one thing that the pattern doesn't um, ask for, but I do, I find that it just provides a better finish is I do understitch my facing. So opening it, it up, you can see that I understitched to the dot or to the notch, the um, it's understitched the seam allowance to the facing piece itself. Then I clipped at my notch, not through my main construction stitching, but to it. And then I stitched everything else towards the actual body of the garment. Because when you get past that notch, that is where like, this is where your this is what's going to show mostly. So my understitching is on that bottom side. It just makes sure that nothing is gonna roll out and it gives me a nice flat finish when I'm done. So now we're gonna do the other side and then I will tack in my shoulders and turn this neck edge in so that I can uh, edge stitch the top part of my collar to the neck edge. And then we'll start working on the sleeves. So I just have this kind of laying down, but we have both of our facings in. I went ahead and stitched along um, the back of my neck piece. So that is all in case. The only thing I have not done yet is tack down the edges of my facing. Sometimes I wait a little bit later in the process to do that. But as you can see here, we have our notches here. They look nice and crisp. I'm really excited about how this is going to look. But again, my side seams and everything are still open and we are gonna start working on our sleeve. So now we're gonna start with our sleeves. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we are working on our continuous lap. So this does not have a traditional placket, but uses a continuous lap with basically a piece of binding, which is piece number seven. To start with, we are going to mark out the uh, slash line as well as the stitching lines on our fabric. So the way that I do this on the wrong side of my fabric, when I am cutting my pattern, I make a longer like slit so I know where my slash line is. And then I take one of my friction pins and I mark out my stitching line. What we're now going to do is I'm going to run a line of stitching up and back down along that line so that I can then cut it open and we can start working to attach the actual piece of bias. All right. So I went ahead and did my line of stitching, sli sliced it open. I then took piece number seven, which is one of my continuous lap pieces. And I went ahead and pressed down a quarter inch on the unmarked edge. So one edge, we can look at the pattern piece, has the dots. I took this edge here and pressed under a quarter of an inch. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece, and we're going to put it, and it's gonna look a little funky because it is going to be right side of my continuous lap to wrong side 
of this and we're going to pin making sure that those dots line up and let's say this is one place that if you don't put a dot it's okay <laughs> what I like to do is making sure that I just make sure that my pieces line up and that this all lines up together along the edge I will go and pin this in place and I will sew along at a quarter of an inch seam allowance just a line of stitching across this So now that we've done that, what I can now do, remove this last pin, is we will now work to take this, press it, and then fold it right on top like that so that I can then edge stitch it along this edge. So after going ahead and doing that edge stitching along this edge, what I then went ahead and did was Took it kind of while it was folded together and did a line of diagonal stitching from the top right down to that corner and then folded back this edge along the bottom edge with the notch on the same side as the notch so that that can then be folded inwards giving it the look and shape of like a regular placket. I'm going to press it out a little bit here just to make sure that that is nice and tight. But once we are done with this, we can start working on the other sleeve. Now, as another part of the preparation set, depending on your fabric, you might want to do some gathering stitches along the top edge of your shirt. So along this edge, basically from notch to double notch. Um, I find again with this fabric, as long as I make sure that I have my dots marked, which I have marked through small slashes and able to line them up with the um, sleeve head of the actual shirt, I'm able to um, easily install the sleeves without the easing stitches, but you might need to use them depending on your fabric. To start installing the sleeves flat, what I do is I go and pin my sleeves and right sides together, making sure I first match my notches. So there is my double notch for the back and my notch for the front. Pin that there. Then I pin the edges as well. And then I make small little slash marks where I have um, the dots and I match those up as well. So it helps in easing in the fabric. Now, if you're following the pattern, another way that you can do this is you can run a line of gathering stitches from um, double notch to notch, two lot rows of that so that you can easily ease it in. Whatever works best for you is what I would suggest you go with. Now, after this, um, I like to go ahead and run this through my serger along the edge just to finish everything up. Another option is, is that you can do this with a French seam where you sew first at a quarter of an inch, trim it down, um, press it over, and you will sew those wrong sides together and then sew it right sides together at uh, three eighths of an inch to give you a five eighth inch seam allowance. Do what works best for you and what gives you the finish that you want. But what I'm about to do is I'm about to sew in my sleeve heads, um, five eighths inch seam allowance, right sides together, and then serge it. All right, so we have our sleeves all sewn in. And I've gone ahead and finished my edges with some serging. And then I pressed my seam allowance towards my sleeve itself. Um, and especially as I'm trying to get this curve, I use a pressing ham just to make sure that I am pressing that um, appropriately as the fabric and stuff is already curving. Um, you want to try to match that curve as you're pressing it. 
Now, we're going to start putting together our side seams. The way that I like to do it, um, you can do it again, right sides together, matching our notches, and we're going to start um, from our sleeve. So we're going to start at the bottom, then we're going to match up our notch here. I like to then make sure that I'm matching up um, this seam juncture. I make sure that they're, of course, pressed flat towards the sleeve itself and put a pin right there to hold that all together. Match my next set of notches. And then match the bottom and pin that together and add any other pins that I need along the way. We're then going to sew that at 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to finish um, this with serging as well. Another option again is that you can French seam this. Um, so you would be putting this first wrong size together. Sewing it at either a fourth or three eighths of an inch, trimming down, pressing, and then folding out, and sewing again at either a three eighths or the quarter of an inch. So I will pin this together, sew this up, and we'll be back as we sew on the cuffs. So now that our side seams are put together, as well as our sleeve, and I've gone ahead and pressed the seam allowance towards the back of the shirt, it's now in time to install our cuff. So looking at the instructions, what you will do is you will take your cuff piece and press under a half inch on the unnotched edge and then trim that down. You would then Put your cuff right sides together. Probably need the other cuff here. Matching our notches. Edged. And you should have a little bit of around 5 eighths of an inch here. This side. The same on the other side. But you'll be matching your notches. And we're going to sew our cuff on right sides together at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now, that is the traditional way to do it. Um, making shirts for a while and trying some other different patterns, what I have come to like to do is I like to take my cuff and install it from the inside. So I'm putting my cuff piece right sides to the wrong side of, of my shirt and then installing it that way. That way, when it comes down for me to make the cuff, you fold it down and do that. But as you turn it over, this folded edge is on the outside of your cuff and you can just add stitch it in place. I find that it just gives a cleaner finish when I do that, but you can follow the normal way and install it right sides together. So let's um, do our first line of stitching to install our cuff piece to our shirt, and then we'll be right back. So once I went ahead and uh, sewed on my cuff, I'm going to press my seam allowances down towards the cuff itself, and we are going to fold the cuff back on itself right sides together along the fold line, 
I'm going to put a pin right here. I'm going to sew right along this edge and then trim the seam. Now, if you did this the normal way that you would do a cuff with it um, right sides together, it is the same procedure. Mine just looks backwards. But we're going to sew this down on either side um, and then trim the seam. So after sewing down the side of my cuff, I trimmed down the seam and pressed it out, making sure that my seam allowances are pressed down and everything is nice and flat. I can then go ahead and edge stitch this. I think I like this method um, just because I can see where I'm stitching and making sure I'm catching everything in place. Um, and especially since I this is only turned up a half an inch, it's going to give me a nice amount of fabric that I'm biting as I am turning this cuff out. Once you have done that on both sides and did that edge stitching, you are now ready to finish a shirt. So now that we have our cuffs all done and top stitched and everything is all together, what you can now do is use your pattern piece for the cuff number eight as well as piece one to mark your buttonhole placements on your cuff, which will have two buttonholes along that front edge here, as well as the four buttonholes along the front. Now, one of the great things about this pattern is because of the size, the buttons are prominent. So you can really have some fun with some buttons. As I'm up here literally trying to decide what I'm about to use. So you can go with a bold basic style or you can even go a little fun with a nice figural button print. After doing your buttons and stuff like that, you will focus on hemming your shirt. Now to get your hem together, the first thing that you will do is you're going to fold this back on itself and do a line of top stitching so that you can, or a line of stitching right along the edge. Now you can follow the actual hem measurements that are stated by the pattern. I know that I'm going to want mine a little bit longer, so I'm probably going to use this 5 eighths of an inch to sew this on. And then I'm going to turn up the rest of my shirt to match and finish my shirt. And that concludes Know Me 2079 View A. Hopefully, you'll come back for the next video, which will focus on View B, the pants.